We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to paint this high exemplar Krios Mini. And our first step is going to be to create a nice bone armor and cloth color. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in future how-to videos, please leave it down below in the comments. All right, this mini has been prepped by being primed white and then I airbrushed a coat of matte white paint over the top to give me a solid surface. I don't usually work with white primer. However, I didn't wanna do any airbrushing on this mini after the prep stages. And it's gonna be easier for me to get a nice cream color by starting from a white base. Usually I paint by picking a base color and highlighting up. But in this case, we're going to do the opposite. We started with the brightest color we can and we are going to do a lot of low lights and add the shadows back in. We are going to start with a shade. In this case, we're going to begin with Seraphim Sepia. And I want to apply this as a very thick line on all of the edges of the armor. I'm basically taking all the details and outlining them. The transition between the white and the seraphim sepia is going to be really stark in the beginning. However, we're going to blend it in later and make the transition a lot more natural. So I want to apply this along all of the trim of the armor plates. I want to outline all of the lines on this chest piece. And I also want to apply this color onto all of the cloth since the cloth is also going to be this bone color. Since the cloth is a much larger area, I can apply a little bit of the shade. Then I can wipe off my brush really quickly and kind of blend the transition a little bit just to help the process along. I'm putting this into the recesses of all the folds on the skirt. I also want to make sure that I get the underside of the skirt as well and outline all of the areas where the armor plates sit on top of the cloth. Here is the bone color after we finished with our seraphim sepia step. It looks really rough right now. So our next step is going to be to start blending these colors together so they look a lot more natural. We're going to begin by using the color Screaming Skull. I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of Lamian Medium to get a really nice translucent paint. And I'm going to paint this on the transition between the white armor plates and everywhere that I just painted with the Seraphim Sepia. I want to do very thin layers so that a little bit of the Seraphim Sepia shows through as I apply it. That's going to help me create a really smooth gradient. But because I'm doing very thin layers, it's going to take me more than one layer to really build up the color in the areas that I want it to be the most concentrated. I'm painting this bone color until I feel like the Seraphim Sepia has been blended into the armor plates a little bit more and there's not any more hard lines where that color is applied. Again, the cloth is a lot larger area so I'm going to be switching to a slightly larger brush but doing the same process, making sure that I paint this over the Seraphim Sepia lines until they're nice and blended. All right, here's Krios after we finish with the Screaming Skull step. Next, we want to use Ceramite White. This is also mixed with Lamian Medium. And we're basically going to be doing the same process that we just did with the Screaming Skull, where we're painting over all of the hard lines and blending them in together so that we have a nice transition all the way from our brown to white. When I paint this on the cloth, I really want to concentrate it on the top of all of these flowing waves in the fabric. It's gonna take me several layers of this white until I get a really smooth transition between colors and that's okay. I just kinda want to play around, slowly adding color until it looks right. Picking out the top of each of these folds in the fabric really makes it look like the skirt has a lot of movement to it. And then as I move on to painting all of the armor plates, I want to make sure that I highlight the areas where the light's going to be hitting it the brightest. And I'm also using this step to blend any area that has a harsh transition between the Screaming Skull and the white paint that we started with on the mini. 
All right, here is Creos after we finished with that ceramic white step. We want to add a little bit more shadow. So we're gonna take a little bit of Agrax Earthshade and I'm just going to apply this to a few areas that I want to be a little bit darker. I'm not doing a full line highlight like I did with my Seraphim Sepia step. I'm just picking out a few shadows that I want to have a little bit more depth to them. So like the very bottom of these shoulder pads at the top, the very darkest shadows on the cloth. I want to put a little bit of color into all of these tattered areas at the hem of the skirt, just to make them stand out a little bit more. Here's Kreos after we finish with that Agrax Earthshade shadow. The last thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a mud stain to the hem of the cloth. I'm gonna use a lot of different colors to kind of make this stain look a little bit more dynamic. We're gonna start really dark and use Dryad Bark. I don't want to apply this as a super controlled layer. I'm just taking an old brush and dabbing it on so that it has a really irregular shape. After I have finished playing the Dryad Bark, I wanna use Gothor Brown. I'm doing a very similar process here. I'm just dabbing it on to kind of create irregular patches of color inside the brown. I don't want to color a whole lot more of the skirt area, but I do want to break up the dark dryad bark that we've applied so far. After the Gothor Brown, I'm going to use a little bit of Talern Sand. Now I'm applying this with my regular brush. However, instead of painting it in straight lines, I'm going to dab it just like I did with my dry brushes earlier. I'm just using my detail brush so I have a little bit more control over where this color gets applied to the mini. I'm putting this everywhere on the weathered hem. However, I'm mostly concentrating it on the very bottom in a kind of a broken, uneven line. After the Talern Sand, I'm gonna use a little bit of Ushapti Bone. This is going to be applied as a dry brush to kind of make it look like this dirt stain is a little bit old and has gotten dusty. And the last step is to take just a little bit of Raiklin Flesh Shade and dab this onto a few areas of this dirty hem. This has a slightly different color than all the other shades that we've used so far. It's a little bit more orange, so it's gonna stand out. And it's a translucent paint, so I can use it to kind of break up the color between that dark dryad bark and the nice light bone color of the skirt. I don't want to use a lot of this color, just a few dabs to kind of add one more element to the weathering. All right, and with that last little bit of shade, the armor on High Exemplar Krios is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to paint the red trim on this armor in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a seven day free trial, and get access to my tutorial, as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy wargaming.